Dear Abby, we've never met before, so this may seem a bit odd, but I feel this is necessary. My name is Jay, for starters. I work at the checkout line at the grocery store up on uh, 67th Street. You know the one with the parking lot that's always too big for the store itself? Yes, that one. I'm 24, fairly tall, have a rather straggly appearance. Probably wouldn't recognize me if I came up to talk to you. Uh, I don't have a very memorable face. Hey, I don't, uh, I don't really know uh, why I'm telling you all this, to be honest. But this isn't the point of me writing to you. I was working late last, late at la, late at night yesterday. It was very, and it was a very average day for the most part. Nothing too exciting. Um, that happened. But you'd be surprised how interesting the job this job gets at times. I've been reading some book. The guy that worked the, at the counter the shift before me had left. It was some really crappy murder mystery, chock full of cliches, incredibly boring, if you ask me. But it's something to do, I guess. When you showed up, though, my whole night changed. I don't know exactly what it was about you that caught my attention at first. But as soon as I saw you, I got this odd feeling. A weird mix between excitement and terror. That's the best way I can describe it, at least. I saw you walk into my line and quickly composed myself. I'd been slouching down in my chair for a while ever since. I rarely got, rarely ever got anyone in my line. It was only when you got closer that I realized what about you caught my attention. You were so beautiful. You walked up and said, hey, and handed me your card. I could tell by the way you were talking and the way you looked that you were very sleepy, very sleep deprived. Though that wasn't surprising considering how late it was. After a second or two of awake, awkward silence, I realized that you'd greeted me. Suddenly, I forced out a, a high in response. I cursed myself out mentally for that one. I sat there for a second trying to focus. What's your name? I said. It's only later. That I realized how odd this must have seemed. The tiny grocery store bad guy asked what someone's name is. I'm glad I did it, though. I remember you said your name was Abigail, but that you'd go for Abby for short. Abby, it seemed to fit so perfectly. The name seemed to roll off my tongue as I sat back, as I said it back to myself silently. It was like sweet honey. It just felt good as I said it. You seemed to be perplexed when I looked back at you. And I wonder if I'd done something to upset you. Shouldn't you be packing those? You said, pointing at the groceries. Groceries! Suddenly shocked and embarrassed, I looked up and apologized. Then clumsy started shoveling groceries into the bag as fast as I could. I couldn't believe myself. How stupid could I be? When I looked up, I realized you were laughing. You were kind of cute. You said, I tried to you said, I tried to play it off cool, but uh, it was obviously thrilled. A girl like this, um, I thought was cute. You are too. As I said, I hastily packed the rest of the groceries. As you walked out, you turned around as you reached the door and said, Have a good night. I'm guessing I look pretty stupid writing all this down. You probably still remember it. I mean, it didn't, it did just happen yesterday. But I went home ecstatic that night. And, and with all the confidence in the world. I feel like it's it, it's un, almost unreal writing it back here. Anyways, I wanted to write you a letter, a letter, Abby, to tell you that I love you. I don't know what it is. I felt that night it was some weird mix up of emotions. But all I know was that even in that small little transaction we had, I felt as if there was something between us. Please write back soon. Sincerely, Jay. Dear Abby, it's been a week since my last letter, and I still haven't gotten a response, but that doesn't matter. How have you been? My life's been as normal as usual. You know, get up, go to work, go to bed. I, I live in a really crappy apartment, but I guess that's what you get when you work as a grocery bagger. I thought, about you, I thought a lot about you lately, and sometimes I wonder if you still remember me. I saw you again today at work, this time at a more reasonable hour, thankfully. I didn't want to bother you. 
to see you if you'd approach me on your own. You came to my line again, which made me absolutely thrilled. This time, I was less nervous. I was going to act normal no matter what you did or say. I wasn't going to let a girl like you slip through my fingers. As he walked up and muttered something that was too quiet for me to make out, and waited at the end of the counter for me to finish packing groceries, this obviously wasn't what I had expected. But it wasn't all too bad. Uh, you seemed to... You didn't seem to feel anything at all, actually. I was expecting you to either come up to me and talk to me or avoid me like the plague. But instead, you just walked on as if I was another stranger. It makes me wonder if you got my last letter. You should check your mailbox more often. There was one moment where I felt something, though. I looked over briefly to see what you were doing. At the same time, you seemed to look up at me how far along I was. Right then, our eyes were locked. Only for a second or two, but in those two seconds, I saw much, much, much more in you than I had seen last time. I felt as if I had known you for years, like I knew all your intricate feelings and emotions. Did you feel anything like that with me? Shortly after I'd finished packing your bags, you paid and walked out. Obviously, this was a pretty normal process, for me, considering I do it about 50 times every day. But I had been determined since the last night I wrote you that letter that the next time I saw you, I was going to get more out of it. Kind of scared that one up. I wasn't satisfied with it. I had to have more. There's a little room in the very, very, very back left corner um, of the grocery store designated for the staff. In there, though... I knew they kept all the security footage from that day. All staff are informed of this and the security camera's location when they're hired. Luckily for me, there's one positioned right next to my counter. I waited until the store closed up and everybody left. <clears throat> then I went in. After flipping through a few of the TV screens, I found the one that was connected to the camera by my counter. I rewinded it until... Uh, about when I remember you coming in. After a few minutes of scanning, I found it. There you were. I paused on the best still shot I could find. I knew the camera wouldn't do you justice, but it was the best I could have for now. Having a longer look at you, I realized how truly perfect you were. Every feature of your body, your hair, your face, your legs, your chest, it was just perfection. I rewinded the tape to when you first came up to my line a few times. I couldn't help myself. Thought my eyes were glued to the screen. After a few minutes of, uh, c consideration, I popped out the tape and shoved it in my pocket. And then I drove home. I knew I wasn't allowed to. I could very well be fired for taking such actions. But I couldn't help myself. I had to have you with me at all times, even if it means losing my job. Abby, I love you. I love everything about you think about you constantly. Do you feel the same way about me? Abby, I just want us to be together. Forever. Right back soon. Yours truly, Jay. Dear Abby, it's been three days and I still haven't gotten a reply. Why don't you talk to me? I'm still unsure if you got my last two letters. Please tell me if you have. So, I got fired from my job. I found the missing tape. I got a call from the store owner, my boss, at 6 a.m. on Monday, and was told to come immediately. They were having a mandatory all-staff meeting when I got there. All the staff was gathered around a small table with the owner at the head of it. Once everyone had arrived, they told us apparently there had been a minor robbery yesterday. They had about $200 worth of stuff taken from them. And the one tape that would have been shown, who was the culprit, was the one I'd taken. <laughs> Just my luck. He told us that no one was going to leave the room until someone confessed. After a few minutes, I finally gave him. I told him everything. About how I feel, as if me and you had some kind of connection. After explaining the whole story, uh, the entire room was staring wide-eyed at me. After finished, I sat there in silence for several seconds. Suddenly, the store owner broke my tension. Jay, you're fired. Get out of here. Never come back, he said. I did, as I was told. I got out there as fast as I could. Mm, so stupid. He was always treating me so bad. 
He's been on my case since the day I got on the job. I swear he's been waiting for me to do one. One little thing. One little thing that could justify firing me. The one time I slip up, he finds out. Why didn't he understand that, though? Doesn't he get that you and I are meant for each other? Any rational man would have understood. Anyone put in my situation would have done that, right? I've been searching I've been searching you a lot up lately. With no job, I have all the time in the world to spend learning about you. Do you know how much you can find about someone with just a first name and a town of residence? And your last name is Marriott. What a beautiful name. A a Abby Marriott. I, I can't help but say it out loud whenever I think about it. I found I also found out you were 24, living only a mile away from you. I drove down your apartment complex today. Looks very nice, much nicer than where I live. I asked to see you a multiple times, but I was told that you weren't there every time. I felt more and more discouraged every time, but I was determined to see you again. A few hours after asking, I decided to stay back in the parking lot for a while waiting for you to come back. Uh, and uh, after many hours of waiting, you did. It was late at night, around 10, I believe. Um, I saw you pull up in your car and get out. I felt a sudden rush of warmth as seen in your face. I knew I had the security camera tape to look at, but it doesn't compare to seeing you in real life. I made sure to record it for later when I was at home. This time at a much higher quality camera, I wanted to capture as much detail as possible. I didn't know the next time I would see you and the security tape wasn't enough for me anymore. I asked the woman at the front desk multiple times what your room number was, but she refused to tell me. <laughs> she thought I was some sort of creep. See, Abby. These people don't understand us. They don't understand what we feel for each other. I ended up waiting in the parking lot a lot longer. A little while longer until someone came out. Uh, after talking to him for a bit, he told me what your apartment number was. <laughs> he didn't want to talk at first, but I made him. You'd be surprised what you can make people tell when you're holding knife to their chest. Don't worry, I, I didn't hurt him too bad. But we can't have someone interfering with us. Don't you agree, Abby? I'm sick of all these people trying to keep us apart. I ended up watching you from the parking lot a while. Once I found your room number, and how rooms, the rooms in this complex were organized, it wasn't hard to locate it. But you should be more careful about shutting your blinds, you know. I was easily able to watch you from your parking lot. I can't get, I can't get you out of my head anymore. All I do is watch that video I took of you over and over. Abby, I want to be with you forever. I want to wake up in the morning and see you next to me in my bed. I cannot wait until the next time I see you. Love, Jay. Dear Abby, I have some really exciting news. I'm moving in with you. Aren't you excited? We can spend hours and hours and hours together. It will be just be so perfect. Let me explain. My job paid just enough so I can make rent and pay food every week. Because of this, I had little to no money in savings. Uh, nowhere near enough to last a very long time. When you take that money flow away, it doesn't take very much time until you have nothing less. I was able to get by for a few days, but today I got evicted. This could actually be better than I had originally thought it. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy that gave me your room number uh, was able to contact the police by now. This way, uh, they won't be able to find me. Oh, we will get to spend all the time in the world together. It's perfect, isn't it? I'll make sure to bring all my tapes and photos I've taken with me, though. And any cameras, of course. You should really tell whoever's managing our apartment complex to get a better staff. I was, I was able to get by security easily. I went up to your room, knocked on the door, but there was no answer. So I decided to get in by other means. After scanning the footage I took from last night over a few times, I noticed you had a ventilation shaft in the corner of your room. Not surprising considering how hot it can get in the summer here. I figured there had been there had to be some kind of maintenance hatch that I can get through. After a few minutes of looking around, I found a door at the end of your hall that seemed to be some kind of staff room. 
Luckily, there was a way into the vents there. I crawled through until I got to your room. It was very, very cramped and hard to move around in. But I managed. When I got there, though, I felt a rush of success. I figured this, since the lights were out and couldn't see anything, that you weren't home. But I'm patient. I scanned every part of your room, trying to memorize all the intrigue details. Your scent overwhelmed me as I sat there. I had caught it briefly during the two times I saw you at the store. But never this strong. It was mesmerizing. I couldn't quite place my fingers on it. But I reminded me, but it, but it reminded me of something. It was almost like peaches. I sat there, hunched over for a few hours. Um, uh, I, though I, I taught myself to be extremely patient. I can sit motionless for hours at a time, not moving a muscle. No one was going to notice me. Then you finally got home. I felt a wide smile on my face the second I heard the door open. There you were, my love. Of course you took no, of course you took no notice to my presence. The light in your room seemed to be angled perfectly so you couldn't see anything in the vent after the first few inches. I tried to contain my excitement, but I started breathing very heavily. I tried to cover it up the best I could. It was hard. You suddenly looked right at the vent. It went completely silent. After a few seconds, though, you seemed to lose interest. This made me smile. It was the perfect spot. I could tell that I had started Lou. All throughout the night, you were turning over in your sleep to look at the vent. People seem to have sense for what, when they're being watched. It can send them into complete panic. Don't try to fake it, Abby. I can tell when someone's awake, when someone's truly scared. Sleep becomes impossible. Why are you so scared anyways? It's just me. Why would I be, uh, why would I be scared of you? You love me, right? I know you love me. Looking forward to spending every day with you. Now, Abby, write back to me if you can. I love you. Dear Abby, I saw you wake up this morning. You didn't sleep a wink last night. You were too uh, emphatic. I spent the whole night watching you. I couldn't help it. Anytime I tried to look away, my eyes seemed to be drawn back a few seconds later. You look even more amazing when you're sleeping, you know. You would be surprised how much, how better you can learn about a person's personality by watching them sleep. I was tempted to get out of the vent to get a better view of you multiple times in the uh, in the night, but I resisted the urge. I couldn't have you figuring out in here, not yet at least. You seemed to spend a lot of time in your bathroom in the morning. I assumed you were taking a shower or putting on makeup. Why would you do that, Abby? Anything you could do to change the way you naturally look would only cover up your true beauty. Why would you do that? Don't you want the whole world to see what I see in you? You left shortly after to work. Or at least that's what I assumed. After careful consideration, I decided to leave the vent. Slid my hand through one of the slits, felt around for one of the vaults. Uh, the surface of the vent. It's very smooth, which made them very easy to find. I grabbed one and tested it as hard as I could. Finally, I was able to pop off. I did this with all the other bolts and finally removed the grating. First thing I did was go over to the bathroom. Quickly disposed of everything I could find that you could use to mask your face. That stuff disgusts me. This way everyone will get to see, you'll get to see how you truly are. I also found something else in there. Your hairbrush. I grabbed it and brought it close to my face to examine it. It was a dual blue. Very thick, rounded handle. But that wasn't the interest. The hair is what made me so interested. It, I took a good few minutes to pull every one of them I can see and line it up onto your counter. I counted and I got 59. This pleased me greatly. I quickly scooped them up and put them in my pocket. I spent the rest of the day going through your stuff to learn more about you. Your interest is in such. You're a big movie fan, Abby. I found your collection in the closet. I have to say, it was quite impressive. I found something else in there that made me mad. A picture of you with another man. He disgusted me, just looking at him. Holding you like he owned you. I'm the only one that can have you, Abby. No one else! At about 8.30, I considered... Starting to get back to the vent. 
Since that's usually when you get back from work, I had no other idea. I looked at your bed, the blankets hung low enough to the floor that you couldn't see me underneath the bed unless you lifted them up. First, I screwed the vent back on. As I slowly slid under with a smile on my face, I waited for you to get home. You finally came. You looked in complete. You looked completely pale, and I noticed someone else come in behind you. They were talking to you about hearing noises coming from your room throughout the day. I mentally yelled at myself. I would need to be more careful from now on. Going under the bed had been a good idea, since obviously the first place you would look was the bed. You thanked the person, and they left. Finally, you and I were alone. Sat there in silence until you went to bed. It seemed like an eternity before you did. I wanted to get a closer look at you tonight, then this was my chance. You got into bed and turned off the lights. I was cautious, though. I waited four hours to make sure you were asleep. And when I was sure, I slowly slid out from under the bed and saw you there. You looked absolutely stunning. Every curve of your body was perfect. Every little detail was beautiful. I was I was in awe and, and looking at you. I reached my hands out and started to stroke your face. It was silk. It was soft like silk. I felt myself starting to... Uh, yeah, I slowly reached... Suddenly, you seemed, you turned and started to woke up. Horrified, I quickly slid back under the bed, trying to be as quiet as possible. A few seconds, I saw you get out of bed and look around. I could see, I could sense you fear. I could sense your fear without even looking at you. You should feel calm around me, Abby. I protect you, Abby. No one will ever touch me, touch you but me. I kill someone for you, Abby. Uh, I made sure to pay attention today that uh, you didn't bring it in my letter from yesterday or any mail at all. You you, you m ju must just not check your mailbox. I'm going to change that. I'm going to leave this one at your, on your desk tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to mention. I'm making something special for you. Check in your closet after you read this. Yours forever, Jay. Dear Abby, I spent more time today working on the surprise when you were while you were at work. You're really gonna love it, Abby. I've put a lot of work into it, you know. I spent a few hours today putting the finishing touches on it, and I think it's finally ready for you to see. You got home at about 8.30 and saw the letter laying on your desk, and almost immediately I started to smile. So I saw you open it, waiting to see your reaction. It was quite interesting watching your face. I could see all your different emotions and thoughts. You seemed to be confused at this, at first, then shocked and horrified. Starting to shake violently, and I saw that you were starting to cry. Do you not like me, Abby? Why were you crying? Don't you love me? Don't you love me, Abby? Everything after that was a blur. You looked over to the closet while still sobbing. You seemed to be... Contemplating whether to, whether to open it or not, instead you ran past it and out the door. When you came back, you had all my letters in hand, starting to go through them. At some point, you seemed to break down and curl up on the floor, tears, tears still rolling down your face. I could tell you were desperate, desperately trying to say something, anything, but you were too paralyzed in fear. After about ten minutes, I saw you look under the bed, in the vent, anywhere else I can be. You see, though, Abby, I'm smarter than that. I knew you'd look in those places. I found a better place after I finished your surprise. You'll never find me there. No one will. Isn't it great? I can watch you forever and ever, and there's nothing you or anyone else can do about it. You haven't found your surprise yet, though, Abby. And I could tell you were still thinking about it. I saw you look over your closet. I knew you wanted to open it, but at the same time, you were nervous. What was going to be in it? What would you, what, what would you find? This couldn't last forever, though. You and I both knew that I, I watched you so slowly walk over to your closet, fumbling with the handle, trying to get a firm grasp on it. Oh, uh, let's see, trying to get a firm grasp on it. Uh, yeah. Suddenly, you flung the doors open and saw it. It was a scrapbook of me and you. I saw you flipping through the pages. You seem to be in shock. Do you not like it, Abby? I got pictures of you and I 
when you weren't looking. Pictures of you sleeping. Pictures of you at your computer. I'd scattered all the hairs that I collected throughout it, along with pictures of couples together, and of course with our faces on them. I got the picture of you with the other guy and put him in the very back, except I didn't leave it like it normally was. I scratched that little dork's break off, face off. I hate him so much. If I knew who he was, I would hunt him down and make him suffer. Don't you get it, Abby? No one, no one can have you but me. Me and you are meant for each other, no one else. I watched you sob for another 30 minutes. Then you got up, ran out of your apartment. Shortly after, you came back with multiple policemen. This shocked me. Did you not like the surprise, Abby? Why would you bring back these people into our room? They'll never find me where I am. But if they did, it can ruin anything. Oh, it can ruin everything. All my work from the last few weeks would, would far be nothing. You wouldn't want it, right, Abby? I'm exhausted from today's work, and as much as I love you, Abby, I need sleep, Abby. Have a good night. I love you. Love, Jay. Dear Abby, do you see what you've done? Do you see what you've done? I woke up at 8 a.m. to see you frantically packing your bags. I was confused at first, but then I understood. You were leaving me. You didn't love me. You don't love me. How could you do this to me, Abby? You were the only thing I wanted in my life. I had nothing else to live for. But when I first met you, I saw a shimmer of hope. I thought that I, I finally could have a reason to wake up in the morning and go on with my crappy life. And you went and threw that away. How could you do this to me, Abby? A few seconds after you left the room, I got in my hiding spot and followed you. I saw you throw your bags in, in the back and then get into your car and start it. I wasn't going to let you get away that, though, Abby. I would never let that happen. I ran as fast as I could to your car and smashed out the window and dragged you out. Did you really think you can get away from me, Abby? I had to hit you over the head to knock you out. <sighs> you were making too much noise. Someone else, someone that didn't understand, could have seen us and ruined everything. Well, I had a plan. I had a plan for if you reacted like this. I drove out to the storage unit at the edge of town. I reserved a slot for the day. I decided to move in with you. I drove up and unlocked it. I grabbed you and carried you inside with me. I had only a few minutes, so you were so you were still unconscious. I made sure to check, though, that you didn't have any didn't have phones in your pockets. I set you down at the very back of the small room. Then I lowered the door. I called the owner of the storage unit and told him that I had visited my lot the other days I'd forgotten to lock it, and asked him if he would mind locking it for me. Of course, he says, and I hung up. When I threw the phone on the ground and stomped on it to make sure that it never worked again, shortly later I heard the owner come up and lock the door. About an hour later, I saw you get up. First, I heard a very, very faint grunt. Then I saw your legs start to move. Shortly after, you were fully awake. When you saw my face, you started to scream which then subsided to a whine and then a whimper. That's when I saw it. The other thing in the room, my knife. It was obvious why it was there. And after a second or two, I realized you jumped and grabbed it. I looked you dead in the eyes and said, Abby, I love you. Then I felt the spearing pain of the knife being driven into my side. I felt, like I f I felt it being pulled out and jabbed with it great force. I could feel it going each time, like a fiery burning hole through my chest. I fell to the floor, laughing while coughing up blood. I saw you back away, trembling, and sit back down in the corner. And now as I sit here in a puddle of my own blood, writing this, I wonder how you'll go out. Will you use the knife, take your own life, or will you let starvation take you? Either way, we'll be together in death, Abby. Together from the day I saw you, we both died just as I wanted it. And as you sit there crying, I'm telling you, you've come to this realization, Abby. This is all I've ever wanted. Love, Jay.